So here I am back in the overworld, but today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to be building or trying to build a mob farm. Um, so if you don't know how overworld mob farms work, um, I, I'm hoping that mobs, they, they seem to react very similar to everything else. Um, every other mob and stuff that I've messed around with in this overworld has seemed to be pretty much your normal overworld mob. So my goal is to go ahead and build what I consider one of the best overworld mob farms. Just your standard, like a uh, four by four circle with a giant uh, box above it that is set up. I mean, just, I mean, it, it just, it just, th this mob farm is just always flaw. It just works perfectly every time. Um, so what I need to do is eventually move this water down to this level because this is our starting path. Now this is going to be offset from our base and I'm thinking about offsetting it this direction. So, and, and it obviously will not be centered with this. It's just not going to be possible to have this centered uh, because this is actually a four by four sort of uh, a farm. So what I'm probably going to do is expand this out and I'm using stone brick for a reason. I'm actually cooking more stone brick down below. Um, and I also have some obsidian on me. Obsidian is going to be the base of this. I'm not going to be using hoppers. I could potentially use like hopper carts, I guess, within the uh, the obsidian. So that way we could potentially automatically catch loot. But I'm not too concerned about that. My main goal is to get experience from this. Um, and we need more experience. And this is actually one of the better experience farms. I don't think an experience farm is going to work that well in the um, end. The end is just the, the mobs that spawn there are also going to be the same mobs that's like that spawn if we made a farm. And those mobs are not going to work well inside a typical Enderman farm. It's just not going to function right. So we need to have something a little bit different. And I think this is going to be the perfect thing for that. Um, so once I get this all set up, um, we should be just about ready to go. And I'm going to I'm going to take you guys through the steps of building this. If it fails, well, I guess today's a video where <laughs> we learn from our mistakes, right? Not all mod packs uh, will work this way, but this definitely works in vanilla Minecraft and has worked in many other packs I've played. So um, this should hopefully work. So right here, I'm going to go ahead and get this set up. This is going to be our four grid spot right here. Mobs are basically going to fall on to this obsidian right here. Um, actually, the yeah, this is the, the right height. Um, and then around that is going to be more obsidian. So if I place this here, um, there's going to be obsidian on the next level right here that basically wraps all the way around like this. I don't think there's a way to make obsidian slabs. That is going to be the major issue that I think is going to come from this is we have to get slabs to go around here and we need to have a slab that is really hard to break. Um, of course, this is really hard to break this material, but uh, mobs will eventually break it. I'm, I'm almost positive. Um, so I'm going to look around. I'm going to figure out what slabs are the best. If we might, we might be able to come up with some kind of obsidian variant of slab. That would be amazing. And if we can, that's exactly what we need to do. We need to set that up. Um, and I'm building this out because we're going to need to go all the way around this thing. Because if we're going to be fighting mobs right here, we need to be a little bit further away than normal probably a normal vanilla farm as we don't want creepers exploding on us. But like if, like if mobs can't see you, they, you shouldn't have a problem with them exploding. Even if they did explode, this is obsidian. It is blast proof. So if anything, it will just kill the mobs that are inside. Uh, we really need to be worried about baby zombies. That is another thing that we need to worry about. Um, so <laughs> we kind of, we got to kind of keep our eyes peeled for that stuff as well. Um, and this of course is going to be closed off here. Um, we're going to have it completely closed off. So obsidian goes all the way around just like this obsidian on the bottom. This is, of course, going to be where the mobs actually drop. This is going to be the tube. Um, and I'm going to build up obsidian a little bit further up as well, uh, just in case mobs decide to pillar up to get to me. Um, I want to make sure to probably go at least eight high at the at the maximum. Um, and then I want the rest of the tube to be brick. So that way, the tube is the main thing I'm concerned about uh, because this is actually going to be 24 blocks up from this platform here. We're going to be 24 blocks up in the sky from this um, standing position. Um, and this should work. This should work, I believe. Um, I think, yeah, with slabs here, I should be able to punch them pretty good. 
and not have to worry about anything. So right here, we are at 22 blocks. Now our main platforms are going to be at Y level 24. So um, you need to kind of stop here at this point, and this is where things are gonna get a little interesting. Um, it looks like I am going to probably run out of stone bricks, so I need to go back down and get some. But these need to be eight blocks out on all sides. Um, and then what we'll do is we'll build up two blocks up around this. So these need to go eight blocks. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And you know, guys, if this works, oh, you know how nice this is going to be to have an experience farm? No longer will I need to worry about uh, enchanting and stuff. I'll just have an enchanting table up here and we'll come up here for enchanting things at night. And it'll be kind of covered up. Um, I'll, I'll create kind of an enclosure above us so we don't have to worry about mobs or anything. And the mobs will just kind of just spew out and we'll just be able to just get experience and also mob drops, which uh, are definitely valuable. So now that we have our stone brick in place, the sun is starting to go down. We need to kind of hurry up. Um, water is actually going to go here, but what makes this all work is placing trap doors right here. Now I'm hoping that the mob AI stuff that has been improved doesn't improve their trap door awareness. Um, and I hope they kind of just bypass right over the trap doors when they're placed double like this, because this is just a vanilla mechanic, um, that mobs, they just kind of go, huh, I can walk right over this. And so what mobs do is when you're standing about 24 blocks away in which this right here, this level we're at now is about 24 blocks away from the platform we're going to be standing on. What this does is this makes mobs kind of wander around when you're within that range, they just kind of wander, you know? Um, ooh, it does look like these are kind of hard to break as well, like with your hand. Um, yeah, so they just they just kind of wander around and eventually they will wander into these water streams. And uh, these water streams should be able to handle these mobs. Um, I am going to have to place some torches, it looks like, because we don't want mobs to spawn up here. Um, I am going to have to deal with the flying mobs, but I'm probably going to go down and sleep anyways. I don't want to have to deal with no flying mobs while we're up here. So as I'm going back down here to sleep, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit of something, something about this. Um, so I forgot to mention that this is actually 128 blocks um, away from the ground. So we are we're a little over that. We're a little over 128 blocks, but you want to be 128 blocks up in the air on this platform here. This needs to be at least 128 above the ground, which we're actually more than that, because at this level, at 128 blocks, mobs actually do not spawn away from you. So if we're up in the air, there's nowhere for mobs to spawn, but this mob farm once we get it built. So that is where the crazy impact is going to happen. And hopefully it's even higher, like the mob spawns are even higher because we're going to be doing something else. We're going to be lowering the platform by two, and we're also going to be placing um, slabs in there to prevent spiders from spawning. So what we should only get is at least two tall mobs and no spiders. So it's gonna, it should work. It should work. Hopefully that prevents spiders from spawning, at least bigger ones. Um, I think there are some smaller spiders that do spawn, but you can see now that they're all spawning down here, but they weren't before. It's not that they were out of our render distance. It's just that they were actually not able to spawn. Um, so will I, we should be able to prevent things like this from spawning. Um, and these big spiders like that should stop spawning. Uh, spider jockeys won't spawn. Because spiders kind of clog up your mob farm. Um, but we should get things like creepers, which is which is really nice because I want creepers. We have an elytra. I want to be able to go get more elytras, right? And so to do that, we need rockets. And so we're going to need gunpowder. And this is going to be one of the best things for us is getting gunpowder. So if we take a look at what I have currently been working on, you can kind of see um, what I'm doing here. This right here, this specific pattern will prevent spiders from spawning. This is the main goal for this. Uh, they needed like a three by three space to, to spawn properly. Um, so within these two blocks, they can't actually spawn here. Um, so having these set up like this allows for mobs to spawn, but it also prevents spiders from spawning, which is really nice. So I'm getting to the point now where I'm almost done. I'm almost done building this thing. And really all we got to do is unhook it. I've already tore down the tower. Um, I'm getting most things done. Um, I mean, this is pretty simple in theory to build. Um, all I did right here was I just went up two blocks and you can see I built another platform very similar to the same one, the one down below. It's actually exactly the same. Um, here's my exit hole. I have to go exit out the bottom. 
Um, because I have to break all the torches inside. You don't want to leave the torches. Well, you might be able to leave the torches. I don't know if uh, anything would spawn in there that would break them, but um, you don't want any torches in there. That's kind of uh, the thing. You want this to be completely dark. And so what I'm working on right now is the slab roof, because you also don't want any mobs to spawn on the roof. So to do this, you're basically just using the bottom half of a slab and you're going to enclose encapsulate this whole thing with it. And that should lock all the light out and make this completely dark. Now, since we built the tube down below, mobs should still get captured in there. However, I still need to get the slabs down because there are going to be mobs, of course, down there that I do have to worry about. Um, so that can get out like things that are like baby zombies. Uh, baby zombies can wreck your day. So you need to make sure that um, you have that under control. And of course, you can just open these. Make sure you keep them closed. You want them to stay closed when you're done. But I've basically built this in less than two Minecraft days. Um, so the sun is just now setting again and we actually slept through the night. So it actually goes pretty quick. Like once you have the materials, it's just getting the materials up here. Um, I did have to make a couple trips to go back down and get more material. Um, and then also bring a crafting table with you. That's another big thing. And uh, you also need eight buckets of water. Normally you could make your own water source, but in this pack, unless you're over a river or an ocean, your water's not unlimited. So you can't make an unlimited water source. So we're kind of, uh, I kind of have to run over and I had eight buckets of uh, water I got from the river over there. So after thinking about it for a little bit, I was like, you know what, right as I was about to leave, maybe we should not use trapdoors because I remembered they actually break down trapdoors. Um, and they will attack redstone. They'll do all that stuff. They'll actually like mess with redstone and things like that. So what I was thinking was, why don't I try out those fans? And I looked at like what the fans require. Um, so it requires a little bit of crude steel, which is actually not too hard for us to get at this point. We just need coal and iron. Um, so I had some of that processing up. Um, it did take quite a bit of iron. So as you can see, luckily we have enough iron. Like we just barely had enough iron. I also had enough redstone. Um, so I now have the right amount. So I did the math um, and I needed for the rest of this, not counting these, um, I needed 56 to finish the rest of this buildup. And what I wanted to do was I probably could have got away with less than this. I probably could have done two per side. That probably would have been a little bit easier than doing four. But I want to make sure that I get these mobs pushed off. And so what will happen is eventually these mobs will kind of wander and normally you can get away with just using one fan, but one fan only pushes the mobs about five blocks or four blocks or so. Um, so what you need to do though, is as it says here, is this can push all entities and items and it says down below, um, it says, um, give a stronger push if there's another fan behind it. So with it behind it, it actually gives enough thrust to be pushed all the way out. And to do this, we have to use redstone, two blocks like this. And that is definitely enough to push the mob all the way off the edge. Um, I hope. I hope that they're not smart enough to kind of push against it. Um, but still, I think that this with two fans is going to be more than sufficient for pushing them off. Um, that's the goal. <laughs> that's the goal. I hope, I hope this works. Otherwise, it was just a waste of a bunch of resources. I mean, a bunch of resources. I also got to be kind of careful with where I'm placing these. Um, for example, let me go ahead and place some of this down right here where I know this fan pushes. And you can see, like, it's actually hard for me to resist right here. I can't even get back through this. So this should be more than enough to get mobs away. And mobs shouldn't actually spawn on this, this block. So um, we're also kind of preventing mobs from spawning there. Uh, which is actually a good thing. Like, and all of them will be all, they'll all be pushed down here and there's nothing for them to really go and break unless they'll try to break these fans, which I don't think is going to be something I should have to worry about, but I don't know. And what I'm doing is I'm placing it right here and I'm also going to be placing it down below as well. Um, and placing two in the corner area. Technically we shouldn't have mob spawning here because this is a blocked off area. So, um, it is reducing the spawn platform by just a little bit. But hopefully this works way better than using trapdoors. I can almost see like the trapdoors just not working out. Um, like I, I guarantee they're going to be like just, yeah, they're going to attack the trapdoor, especially when they're down here. They're yeah, they're going to take them out. So this is actually working out perfectly. That design 
I believe is working out great. You can see the redstone from here. It's actually working really well. Um, yes, yeah, some mobs are going to try to pillar up and stuff. But for the most part, I can get in here. Um, I will have a, a, the occasional explosion. But this marble slab, from what I've tested so far, seems to be working. Uh, being blast resistant. Uh, creepers will explode on you. So you have to be weary of that. But as long as you're, you know, okay, you know, with a couple of creepers blowing up every now and then, you should be fine. But getting in here and like as soon as they drop, like hitting them, getting that experience, that shouldn't shouldn't be too hard for you to handle. Right? That should be pretty easy to maintain. I don't know why I've got like things. I guess they were trying to pillar up. Um, but yeah, like this is a good way to get all these resources. They're taking damage from falling. I mean, the only thing you gotta worry about is the occasional thing coming after you like that. I mean, and this they will build up. Oh boy. And then you got those guys. I don't know how to really protect against those guys. Um, they will attack you regardless. Um, and we have blindness, mining fatigue. I can't see a thing. That is awful. Yeah, that guy is a problem for sure. But we might be able to get him. I did see some like ninja mobs. Okay. I'm just aiming. I can't see a thing. You see blackness, I see blackness. So, I think we had a thing on us. Okay. Yeah. But anyways, this is a great way to get experience and also to get gunpowder, which I'm going to be needing. Because I believe fireworks are going to take that. Um, I really wish there was like a better way to see up there. I feel like everything should be working out though. Like things should be falling down. Just uh, occasionally we're going to get those things that uh, actually spawn in the end. And I mean, we're just going to have to kind of deal with them the best as possible. If you do end up running into a major problem with the mob that is up here, uh, that you're like, oh man, this mob is bothering me. All you have to do is just go back down to your base. Like it's as simple as that. It's as simple as literally just going down to your base and the mobs up here will, sp will despawn and you can just start all over again actually pretty nice so now that i'm back down at my base i have some levels you guys have been telling me why don't you upgrade your enchanting table into a better one how about a true enchanting table and so really we have everything for this uh, we just need to make a knowledge orb which i mean isn't that difficult to make um, we just need one piece of clay i already have the rune on me that we need we used that rune before pop that in there bam we have ourselves a magic orb Combine that, we get a knowledge orb, very simply put. Um, and all we got to do is make this enchanting table upgrade, right? This, right click this on an enchanting table and we will be able to choose our enchantments. Basically, that's what we get to do. I mean, I'm super excited about that. We need a piece of mithril. I only have one, so I'm super excited that I have that. Um, I don't have to really worry about much. And then we'll take the gold. We need four gold blocks, which we have just enough. And this right here, an obsidian. And we also need an enchanted book of any kind. I'll use this one. Uh, actually, no, that's got fire protection on it. I'll just use the spikes, the single spikes one. We'll grab a little bit of glowstone. There we go. We get an enchanting book plus, which is apparently just a decorative item. Like that. Look at that. You can place it down. Looks mighty fancy. Hopefully they can, this can be harvested. There we go. And it's ready to go. So all we gotta do is make this now, which we just need two blocks of, of obsidian, which I actually might be, uh, they might actually be in the chest. Nope, I have two more right here. Very nice. I can't wait till we also get to upgrading our um, storage system. There we go. So shift right click on an enchanting table to upgrade. Oh, I'm ready for this. Shift right click. Oh. <gasps> Ooh, true enchanting table. Put this in here. Look at this. It tells us like everything that can be on here. Um, I don't see mending. Mending. No changes have been made. I see unbreaking thorns. Is mending just not a thing that is just right? Hmm. Maybe mending has been removed as an enchant. 
And I believe even if things have um, enchants on them, you can still enchant them more. Right? So like this has efficiency, but if we bring this up to efficiency 5, we can enchant this. It, is, it isn't telling me where the... Uh, how much the enchant's going to cost. That's the problem. And I don't want to do that. It says place an item to see enchants. Um, treasure enchantments require a floor of precious materials and daylight. So, okay, so we need a, a floor that is full of, like, precious materials. Okay, so I'm going to need to break out this floor. And that means, like, things like gold, and I'm guessing, like, a gold floor, maybe? I think I have gold ore. I could probably get that cooked up. So it is basically daytime now. Um, and I now have my gold blocks after smelting those up. Go ahead and place this underneath here. And, oh, I much like, okay. And this unlocks mending right there. And that is the main thing I want on this. So now that we have this mob farm, we can totally give ourselves mending. Um, and it says right here, you need more experience to use this enchant. Experience cost. Um, discount 15%. Okay. Um, curses can only be modded near midnight. On nights with full moons. Okay, so that is something that we can know. Um, okay, so cost... That's experience, like this right here is the experience cost to put mending on here. Like, apparently it's too expensive. I don't know how much more, how much that equals. I'll have to actually look that up. That's not equating to this. This is equating to, like, the actual number of experience we have. Oh, okay. Actually, no, I'm, I'm, re I'm seeing this now. This is how much experience we actually have. This is the cost of the enchant. So, if we look back at... Uh, mending, for example, to put mending one on there. Wow, that's going to require a lot of experience. Because we have 30 levels right now, so this is way more than 30 levels worth. If that's what I'm seeing properly. Okay, that's a very expensive enchant. I'm breaking three to, to make sure we get that on there is a very expensive enchant. Okay. Okay, so having a mob farm is definitely a necessity. And... Yeah, that's going to be something that we definitely want. So, like, if I was to move efficiency... Okay, so we already had this enchanted with efficiency. So, to move this up is a thing. All right. How much is it to enchant a book? You know, because we can just uh, enchant a regular old-fashioned book, right? And put mending on it, potentially? And maybe the book will be cheaper because the armor... Okay. You can place bookshelves around to reduce the cost of enchanting. Oh... <gasps> So wait, you can, you can have more bookshelves? Uh, excuse me. We're doing that. Uh, that means we need to go back to our end portal and go get books. Oh yeah. And here we are. Of course, I don't have <laughs> a proper blade for this. Oh yeah, but I'm clearing this. I'm clearing this whole thing out. 100%. This is getting cleared out. Uh, first of all. Is there anything nice in here? A bunch of paper. And then there's another one up here, usually. That we should be able to, to clear out. Hopefully there's something good in it. Knockback, efficiency five. That's actually really nice. And climbing gloves. <gasps> I didn't have to make climbing gloves. Whoa, what are those? Oh my creepers. Uh, excuse me. I cannot believe that just happened. What are you looking at? So, I'm after the bookshelves. <laughs> now we have climbing gloves, which is actually kind of cool. No climbing gloves up in here. So when it says more enchanting tables, like, does it mean, like, wrapping the whole thing around? Like, does it actually go up too high? Because it they don't do that anymore, for the most part. Like, do I need enchanting tables here? I mean, because I can do that. Even one here. Why not? I'll just enchant my stuff from up above, you know? <laughs> All right, now how much does mending cost? All right, mending. Uh, it went down a little bit. Look at our discount. We have 24. Oh, man. Does that, like, does that mean, like, like, this is a maxed out, like, there's no way. Does it, 
allow things to go higher? We're at 24. Me adding that did not help at all. Like, can I add more books behind here? Does that change anything? We're still at 24% discount. That's basically it, probably. <laughs> That's probably as far as the discount's gonna go. Unless, like, having gym blocks, like having actual diamond blocks underneath your uh, table actually changes the discount. We can try that. I can make a diamond block and uh, just place it right here. Can make we can make that real quick. We can do we can do this a solid. I just want to see now that we have our our experience, man. I <laughs> I kind of want to see how this goes. All right, let's use let's use diamonds as our gems underneath. Just gonna make it fancy. We were at twenty four. Does this increase it more? Hopefully. It did only say bookshelves. Really didn't say anything about gym blocks. Twenty four. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter does not care um so we also learned that books cannot be we have curse brick i don't really know what that is either um and does other enchanted books like books that are already enchanted can they be enchanted further like i don't know like this one has luck of the sea on it will it just let me make it luck of the sea higher nothing okay so it's already enchanted so it doesn't work well I mean, I guess that's kind of good to know, but we can put like Silk Touch easily on a pick now. Oh yeah, this is, this is definitely good. This is amazing. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, be sure to click that subscribe button if you haven't already. And also give this video guys a huge thumbs up. Took a lot of work on today's episode. I hope you enjoyed. I see you guys in the next episode. And as always, thanks for watching.